Can anybody hear me? Uh, I've got to figure out where we are in the chat as well. Here we go. Figure out where we are. <laughs> Anybody here? Hello. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm uh, two minutes behind, so sorry about that. Um, but I'll let some folks uh, uh, make their way on in here, and I'm going to go share this on Facebook as well real quick. Um, but welcome. What we're going to do today is walk through this part. It actually just came in a few minutes ago. Uh, we've got permission to share it, and so I have not done anything other than upload it, and I wanted to walk through how we'll quote it and we'll do a quick cam. We may not finish the cam totally, but we should get through a good portion of it uh, and get an idea of, of what we're gonna charge for this part and how long it's gonna take to machine and some of the quirks on strategies and so forth. Live. This is a new test, a new format for us. So uh, if you guys have questions, um, I will try to watch the chat window um, and certainly give some time at the end for questions. And if we if we enjoy this, I'm happy to do this uh, going forward. I think it's actually kind of fun to do it live and change things up a little from the uh, Fusion Fridays that we've been doing to date, which are pretty produced um, content. Uh, <clears throat> well, the good news is that this is uh, will be recorded and available on NYCCNC. So there's no need uh, to worry. You can go rewatch it. And I think on that note, we're just going to go ahead and dive in. So this part came in to job, shop, job, quantity, 25 parts, uh, relatively simple part. Uh, will does look like it'll take two setups, but that's okay. Because usually on a relatively low quantity like this, uh, assuming that it's not an incredibly expensive material like maybe titanium or something uh, that would be unusual, uh, we'll probably hold it underneath. Uh, so we'll have some extra material here. We'll hold it underneath there, do all of our machining in one operation. That's a real easy way for process reliability and to hold tolerances. And then as the last stop, we'll flip it over. We've got some good geometry here that we can use to locate off of deck off the hat top and add those two final chamfers. So a two op part for sure, or sometimes I kind of call it like a one and a half op because the second operation isn't really very risky uh, at all and, and pretty easy to go about. So first thing we've got to do is figure out uh, material size. So I'll hop into, actually, before I do that, uh, this came in as a step file and I always try to remember to convert it to a component. Uh, that's really important if we're going to use soft jaws or other things where we want to have joints. Uh, that's the stuff under the assemble menu. And if you don't do that, it's sometimes a little bit more of a pain later on to make that change. And I uh, make sure I'm capturing design history. Again, I, I vehemently disagree with Autodesk's decision not to let that be uh, a setting set by default. 
uh, when you import a file because most people use Fusion 360 for parametric CAD. So there's this capture design history gives us this tree along the bottom. You can always go the other way um, if you want to convert it to do not capture. And I'll, I won't ramble further than that other than to say, darn it, it's wrong and they need to fix it. Uh, so we've got a component, we'll call this our part. And I'm going to head into CAM, create a new setup, switch my X axis by clicking the red arrow. And what is this doing? So it's putting a box around my part. I click on stock. It's a relative size box. It's adding 40 thousandths of an inch uh, on the top and on the sides. I'm fine with that for the sides. Uh, I'm not okay with that for the top. So relative size box can be great, including the round up too. So if we round up to the nearest quarter inch, that's gonna make it more uh, logical that we're gonna find material in that particular size. But I've just always gotten in the habit uh, of, of doing this a little differently. So I'm gonna switch to fixed size box. Uh, 175, you know, I would probably talk to the customer about this because we're right on size there. Uh, extrusion, if this is aluminum, does tend to be, uh, f you know, four to eight thousandths of an inch over. So there's a chance that we can actually still uh, clean up these two faces. But um, I'm going to assume for today's purposes that they're going to want, oops, I'm sorry, I lied. Uh, might be able to find 875 stock, seven eighths. Width would be 1.75. That'll be plenty on the sides to clean up. And the height's the big difference. So I'm going to change this to be one inch high. It is aluminum. And I'm going to change the offset from top by 50 thou. And then what I'm going to do is just give a visual uh, look at this and see, okay, 75, not enough. So aluminum is cheap. Um, now you, you do want to shun material. The more material you buy, the more you have to pay for material, the more it costs to ship it, and the more you got to machine away. So in fact, it may be worth using 875 stock here because um, that is plenty um, to hold on to in a set of talon grips or even soft jaws or, or parallel jaws. So we've got 875 by 875. I bet you we can actually find that so the next thing I'll do is go to, oops, sure. Um, MyAlro.com. I don't always buy the material from Alro, but um, sorry, I'm trying to get my material, but they have a uh, free and online quoting system that doesn't require any registration. So even if you're at any part of the country or world, you could use this, although metals markets are very much uh, or can be region specific. So I'll go to aluminum bars, 6061 EXT for extrusion. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do square and they've got seven eighths and I'll do custom cut um, we basically buy all our material custom cut. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but even if I were to purchase a full stick of this and cut it up, first of all, I'm going to have to buy way more than I need. Uh, but also there's some labor that goes into the uh, the need to cut it up. So I will select uh, manifold quality just means it's slightly higher uh, quality. It's a little bit frustrating because I think what I've been told is that that's also them saying, we'll just not beat the beat the crap out of this material. In other words, we'll try to handle it uh, better, which, you know, frustrating. In this case, we don't necessarily need that because we're going to machine all the faces away. Nevertheless, I want it to sit well in my parallels and I just have always generally gone with that. So we want 25. So I'll probably buy 27 pieces um, for to have some extra. 175 width is fine. Add items to cart. So I've now got a material price of $4.37. So we've got this quote template here that we use to give us really quick quotes. And that is available for, let's see, where is that? If we just Google um, NYC CNC, uh, how we quote probably gets it up. Um, yeah, so 
it is a, I believe you got to be a pro member for this one. We've got a video that walks through it as well as a copy of this um, uh, Excel worksheet. So I'm going to type into here, put 118 bucks. So $118. We've got a generic markup of 25%. Um, we'll come back to some of the pricing dynamics of uh, whether that's too little or too much, uh, really it comes back to the overall job of what it's going to take. So 25 of them, that gives me my material price. We're not going to bandsaw it, so that doesn't have any uh, um, work. And it's really going to be just the two ops, so zero, zero. And let's take a look. So if you've been machining parts for a long time, it usually doesn't take too long to figure out, okay, what does this part look like? Um, how long is it going to take to run in the machine? Is there a lot of surfacing or a lot of material removal? How risky is it? You know, if there's a really long tap or it's a material that could uh, get damaged or there's a really critical tolerance, that all factors into the complexity because at the end of the day, uh, you price these parts based on what they're worth to the customer, uh, not necessarily how long it takes you. Um, now, they should; those two things should be related in a perfect world, but um, they aren't always, you know, in the... Obvious examples are, you know, a local aerospace company that's in a pinch and needs this little bracket as simple as it is with loose tolerance that they need it uh, the next morning. Uh, their needs are very different than someone who's trying to order a high quantity of these and is competitive pricing and shopping along many shops. So there's a lot of different factors that really play into this. And our advice to um, folks that are getting started is that do great work, do it on time, communicate with your customer. Uh, and I have yet to meet a uh, user of machine shop services, you know, somebody who, who outsources work. I have yet to meet somebody who says, you know what, we've just really got too many reliable machine shops that do work at a reasonable price on time and consistent with quality. And, and usually price isn't even the biggest factor there. Uh, so I think there's still a lot of opportunities in this world to, to, to really excel at this. So we're gonna start with a template Right click, create from template. Um, I'll do Haas aluminum. So we have these templates that really help speed things up. Um, so we can probe the part in. I'm not gonna do that here because we don't need to probe this part. Uh, it is easier with templates though to have more than you need and then to delete things away. Uh, I will face it, look at my coordinate system. So that's fine. Although honestly, that's too high. I thought I had it set at 50 thou. Yeah, we can really just do 10 thou. That's going to give us a little bit more meat down there uh, at the bottom. Okay, so face it off. Now, adaptive is going to be a little bit tricky here because these are relatively narrow slots. So I measure this. That is a 251 width, but 0.45 inch deep. So not even two times, not quite as bad as I thought. So we will actually adaptive this out. Um, I've got my adaptive right here. It's probably set to a large tool, yeah, half inch. So all I've got to do is switch out tool 12 to a 3 16 I don't think I keep, I might have a uh, 3 16 tool saved in my library here. Yep, perfect. So that pulls in all of my default settings, feeds and speeds, passes. I will have to update the optimal load. So 0 0.1875 times 0.2. Cutting radius, we may actually need to drop that down. That speaks to how small of an area it can get into. Um, and we'll leave none on the floor there. And I've got to fix my template. It should have had smoothing already set, turned on. Click OK. This might take a second to generate because of the nature of it. Um, nope, that was pretty quick. So let's see here. Width, depth of cut is potentially an issue. <clears throat> but you notice how I've got the time already displayed right here. If you go to your name, preferences, and you click on cam, show cycle type, nope, excuse me, show operation, machining time, checked. I really like that because I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time. If I gotta run um, 25 of these parts, that's a really small quantity. Now that's not to say we aren't gonna improve it a little bit here, but um, recognize the diminishing returns. Don't spend 20 minutes trying to save 10 seconds. Um, oh, someone was asking about my computer settings, sorry. Um, and let me know guys, am I going 
I'll, I'll, I know that I'll never please everybody, but let me know if I'm going too slow uh, or too fast. Uh, also, please remember you can rewatch this uh, later on YouTube. So don't feel like you've got to be taking notes furiously. Um, yeah, I, I loathe uh, Microsoft's desire to steal all of my computer performance power to make their software look better. So I go into, um, shoot, where is it? Um, Windows uh, graphics? Color management? No, shoot. Um, Windows. I can't. Can somebody type in the comments um, where? I can't remember where it is. Basically, I disable. Here we go. Visual effects. No, Microsoft. No, I don't care about fading in menus and all these fancy smooth things that rob my graphics processor. So I basically turned them all off. I wanted thumbnails because I like to see my pictures, um, previews and smooth edges of screen fonts is a problem if you turn it off. Um, yeah, Windows 10, don't get me started. So if you go to, it looks like it's called visual effects or just visual effects. So I got my adaptive. Um, it's probably a pretty pretty easy step down. Um, I'll say go down to double the tool diameter. So you can do fancy things like tool diameter. No. Yeah, there's a formula. I don't know it. Um, I'm just going to type 0.1875 times 2. Um, we do keep those. I got tired of looking for them. So if you Google NYC CNC fusion parameters, we keep, we, we built a page, uh, shout out to Rob Lockwood and various other folks at Autodesk who had put this together on the forums. Uh, it was just difficult to find. Um, and these are the most common ones that you would use. So tool diameter, they're all super case sensitive. And often, I think it's like a legacy JavaScript thing or something where oftentimes the last word is the one that has the capital or, or something peculiar. So tool diameter would work. So we could say tool diameter times two and click OK. That'll probably take the, yeah, so that cut that time in half. And that's a pretty reliable uh, operation, especially if you've got flood coolant. Now, the problem is you can see it's not getting in between there. And that is a minimum, uh, minimum radius setting of this. Um, it's also affected by radial stock to leave because that's obviously reducing the uh, area it's allowed to sort of adaptively slot through <clears throat> but that there you go that fixed it now depending on your machine kinematics and performance and so forth this is going to run a lot slower than the 139 shown because fusion assumes that your machine can achieve perfect acceleration and deceleration or instantaneous acceleration and deceleration the reality is it can't um nevertheless i would expect that to be somewhere between two and three minutes um based on again our sort of general experience now i'm not going to use um, this 3 sixteenths tool to machine this bottom area. Um, and so that what that makes me realize is, wait a minute here, I'm going to use a quarter inch tool, which is a lot stronger uh, than a 3 sixteenths. So I'm actually going to right click and duplicate. And so now I've got two of these and I'm going to change the um, Settings here, uh, Spencer, no. As far as I know, there is not a parameter for acceleration and deceleration and fusion simulation. And I'll switch this to a quarter inch tool. Where's my cloud library? Something's wrong. I'm missing my VM3 library, which has me a little nervous right now. Um, quarter inch tool. And now we can increase that to a 0 0.0625 cut depth with step down of, I'll keep it at half an inch. Click OK. So the um, quarter inch tool is gonna actually do a lot of the heavy lifting here for us. Um, and I'll make two changes. I'm gonna drop it. Um, yeah, sorry guys, we can't do metric live. We've done a huge amount of effort. Um, I will not, uh, I will give, uh, we've been, we put a lot of effort into the time it takes to convert all of our videos into metric. Now, obviously that doesn't work when we're real time. So sorry, don't have a good answer for you there. Um, I'm going to drive the heights down on this because I want that adaptive to run uh, just, you know, say 10 thou below the part. And was that all I wanted to do there? I think so. Cool. 
and then I'll do the 3 16th tool. I will check uh, rest machining and that will inherit the previous operation here, sorry. So that will inherit um, the stock that was left over from the quarter inch tool. So we're gonna see that 3 16th tool do a lot less work, which is obviously great because um, now these two together are, are quite fast um, and that's a good thing, stronger tools. So uh, if we just take a look, what do these three get us? Simulate, stock, tail, wall paint to the end. Cool, looks pretty good so far. So I've got these holes here. Let's measure those guys. 3 16th. Oh, that's less than 3 16th. That's annoying. Um, 180. So I would potentially let the customer know um, the uh, you could save some money if you converted those to 3 16th holes, depending on what the use is. Um, very likely that's something that could be that could happen because I think what is that seven thousandths of an inch. Nevertheless, I can look up number fifteen drill would do all three of these, so should have a drill already in here somewhere. <laughs> I thought I did. Here we go. Move this up. So what I'm going to do um, is if this fusion live stream turns into a metric imperial debate, uh, I am shutting down my YouTube channel. I will readily admit that the metric system is superior. Unfortunately, um, we are born and live and breathe the imperial world. So sorry. I'm not saying it's better, but uh, that's all I got. So I had a new drill. Um, I'll pick the tool number later. I just pick a, actually I'll pick an arbitrary number, 15 drill. Kidding, uh, if you hit the drop down arrow um, and hit the D key, that'll move you to the next D command. So that's a quick way to get to the drill. Two flutes, um, it is 0 0.180. And for feeds and speeds, uh, high speed steel drills, I'll run at 175 or so surface feet a minute and probably six thou feed per rev. It's a pretty safe recipe. Uh, and again, there's not gonna be a ton of drilling in these parts, so there's no need to spend the time. Um, <laughs> there's no need to spend, I'm laughing at these metric comments, sorry. Spend the time uh, dialing that in. If you choose, um, Auto merge hole segments. I need to make sure I pick the bottom hole. I want to make sure that it's not going to um, plunge through that material. So that's actually a really good little fusion trick. I think some people don't know about. I'll go to simulation and show the toolpath here. See that? That is so bogus. You're getting different toolpath colors here versus here. So that's a, a red flag and I think a bug. What I care about that tend to be accurate though, would be go to simulate, change this to info, that's the middle tab. And now you can see the movement style that it's making as well as the actual feed rate. So as I move into that, you can see I've actually, I've switched from a, a rapid to a cutting feed rate. That's what I want. That's, uh, that's important to me to know that I'm not gonna send that drill 500 inches a minute uh, through this part. Because it's not actually a TSC drill, that stands for through spindle coolant. So, you know, twist drill. We'll want to turn on oops, pecking. So drilling, partial retract, full retract. I would probably just full retract um, 0.18 times 0.25 in quarter inch. It's probably a relatively quick. Oh, no, actually, that's a minute 51. That may be pretty slow. So, um peck there, but full retract. Yeah, that speeds us up a lot. Okay. Um, so now that I've got those holes in there, that's actually going to change um, how I think about the cam for this part. Because what is that overall length? Yeah, 676. So I would have to chase. See, that's a problem. I'd have to chase that hole out uh, to be 7th out bigger. So I would probably go to the customer and say, hey, let's make these the same size. Otherwise, you'd have to drill that out. It's too deep uh, of a hole relative to its diameter to interpolate it out. But uh, I am going to drill those first because then when I come in here with my quarter inch tool, which was tool two, I'll do a 2D 
adaptive clearing, pocket selections here. Oops. Uh, I, I do not know what the part is for mini bacon, and oftentimes we don't, and oftentimes we never ask. Not our business. Um, unless it's for some reason relevant. Um, our insurance policy works that um, such that as long as the person gives us a print um, in the part itself uh, in the solid model, so we're not doing engineering, we're basically good to go. Um, that being said, we're not certified to do aerospace work and other things like that. But no one is going, no one who actually sources aerospace work is going to send it to a shop unless they confirm that they're uh, aerospace certified. So it didn't give me a good tool path. And that's probably because um, it's a pretty narrow diameter hole relative to the tool we're using, a quarter inch tool. So in that case, well, first of all, I got the wrong tool selected. Maybe it'll work now. No, it still didn't work. And so the first go-to answer for there is the last tab, minimum cutting uh, helical ramp diameter. I just set this to something much smaller and that will drive the red interpolation path of how tight it's cutting. Um, what were you saying no kidding to, Kavid? Hmm, wonder why you're not working. Maybe make it one thou, should work. Huh. I mean, so next thing I'll do is switch it to a 3 16 tool. Um, if that fixes it, then I just did have a link. And we could use a 3 16 tool here. Yeah, so maybe we'll just, I don't know. I want to use a quarter inch tool. Mm -hmm. So stock to leave is pretty low. Smoothing, I'll turn on. Um, what if we just change it to a plunge? Uh, that's quite odd. Minimum, oh, I'm sorry. Good grief, guys. Minimum cutting radius has to be set really low. That's the issue. There we go. So we already have the hole drilled. And so I am going to be doing a pretty tight plunge. Now, I had set that to 1 thou just to get the toolpath, or excuse me, I set it to a plunge. Now that we've got it working, I'm going to open that back up. So it's going to do a helical interpolated entrance move, um, but there's already a 0.18 inch hole there. So um, it should be pretty easy on the tool. And because the hole that we drilled is a through hole, it'll actually have uh, a place for those chips to fall through, which makes it even better. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can add this second side to it. And those are gonna need to get cleaned up. The adaptive has some stock to leave. So you can right click, choose, create derived op, 2D milling, 2D contour, click okay, you're done. Um, put it at the bottom, but that's nice because it um, inherits all those settings you already have and makes you really, really easy to uh, rock and roll on that. Okay, so where are we? Oops, should have gotten the uh, should have gotten the three sixteenth through there. Did I not? Oh, it, I lost it because of the rest machine. It went. Uh, here we go. So for now, I know that toolpath is is nailed down, and I don't want it to uh, have to be regenerated every time I'm playing around with this. So I'm going to right click and protect it. I will regenerate it again before we run this part. But for now, I don't want to deal with that having to happen. So good, that gives me this part. Counterboards are done. Outside shape is done. Um, I'll toggle on and off the light bulb. Or excuse me, I'll toggle on and off the stock to get a better look at where we're at um, or just turn it transparent can help look. So we've got to do some 2D contour cleanups uh, as well as some chamfers and then this surface area right here. Actually a really good part. It's just simple enough that it's, it's pretty easy but um, isn't boring. So 2D contour, I'll just duplicate this one. 
Quarter-inch tool is fine. And I'm going to pick that, 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 and click OK. Now, what tool did we make that floor surface with? Why won't you go in there? Huh. It should be willing. To, that's a uh, one thou over. Gosh, Fusion should be willing to let it go in there, but um, I don't know that I've ever seen that. It's the super tight, um, the super tight, you know, one thou over. So that's actually not a good idea. So we'll switch back to the 3 16th to. Um, to go ahead and do the 2D contours around it. A lot of times what I'll do though, is I will set this tool path to be um, stock to leave, no radial, but half a thousandth of an inch axial. And what that can do is it will stop you from seeing those uh, tool paths that were run around the sides of parts. Looks like a little moat walking on the floor because you're half a thou above uh, the bottom of the part. Save our part. Um, chamfer, so 2D contour, uh, pick tool. I don't know if tool 25 for us will be big enough or not. Here we go. Uh, that's a 30 degree chamfer. Anybody else not ever use the, uh, filters at the top? I, I don't find them very uh, efficient or helpful. Uh, hold down the alt key, lets you pick just the single edge here that we want. Uh, and chamfer width is zero offset can be probably a little bit more. The width is zero because we've already, uh, we already have a chamfer picked. So what I'll do with the chamfers is simulate toolpath for op and I'll click here and I'll just drag it along and make sure that looks right. Oops. Yeah. So that gives me the chamfer I want. I've got a nice offset amount, not going to cl collide with everything. Gives me good chamfering. Um, up to you about doing a machined chamfer along various other elements of this part. Uh, I probably would do it uh, depending on the customer's demands and preferences. So you could do 2D chamfer this time, not 2D contour. Same tool I just had. Now, the more offset you give it, the better the tighter it's going to be able to get on parts. So point one, do a three thou chamfer and I'll start picking some geometry. Let's see here, all that would be fine to do. All that, that, all that. You just need to be really careful to make sure you simulate this. So there's a good example of um, it ran the chamfer at the wrong height there. Um, or they, rather the offset's not going to work. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these. I can hold down the alt key and delete those two for now. Click okay. And again, just use simulation to move through here and look, make sure you're not going to have any collisions. For example, right there, we haven't machined this away yet, but, um, show points lets you sometimes more easily click, jump down to an area and look, it will not. Um, it's generally quite good about not colliding or crashing. However, I have seen a couple of instances where you just want to simulate it and make sure everything looks good. So how do we surface this guy? Um, it's interesting because it's a, it's not a, it's not a great, um, it's not necessarily a one operation thing because you've got a relatively steep wall transitioning into a relatively smooth wall. Uh, we'll start though with the parallel tool path and this one is better for the shallow areas. Uh, so let's at least see what we've got. We needed to do a ball nose end mill. What the heck, I'll try a filter. Type ball or bull would work. I don't have one, so let's make one. Cutter, bull nose, we'll say it's a three flute quarter inch. They um, 0.125 inch rad, that would be a ball. Point, um, 0.25 divided by four, assume it's that guy. And speeds and feeds we'll deal with, we can deal with later. It's not important for this. So a couple ways to do this parallel toolpath here. 
I will just click OK, and let's just see what we get. That's one of the cool things about Parallels is um, they're, it's easier to start, get a toolpath, and then start narrowing it down. Um, so now that we've done all that, I'm going to delete a lot of this extra stuff that I don't think we'll need. So we'll pick geometry. I'm going to click on this once. It turns into that green neon green box. Left click it once again, hover over to here. That was not the selection I wanted, but nevertheless, what I can do now is move the mouse around there. So I've got this mix of black and blue box around all the surface areas. Click accept, tool center on boundary, contact point boundary, you should check um, and click OK. So looks OK, but we need to, um, let's see here, we need to increase our step over to say 10 thou, see what we get. Would it have to be a ball because of the continuous curve? Yeah, that's a great point. Sorry, I didn't think about it coming back around here. Uh, I keep all of our programs, usually, I don't have an active means of deleting them, I'll put it that way, uh, BGW, unless for some reason it's it's appropriate or, or requested or, or just they need to be deleted, in which case obviously we do. So let's switch this to a ball, end mill. I wish it was just this easy where you could just say, um, I wish I could, uh, we don't stock a ton of ball and bullnose end mills. So sometimes you've got to work with the, uh, the cards you got. Um, another request I would really like to see from the fusion team is a section view, uh, in camp. We have it in CAD, but like right now I'd like to look at this part from the side view and simulate it and start to look at how that cutter is going to interact with this part. And I can't do that because I got this stuff in the way. Um, there's other things we could do to get there if it was really important, um, including just duplicating the part and cutting it away. But you can see as a general rule, that's going to surface along there. Uh, but again, the parallel toolpath does better uh, in the shallow areas. So what we can do is a hybrid. <clears throat> I'm going to have this toolpath start. Top height will be stock top minus 0.1. Okay, I just wanted to get it to move, and I'm going to drag it down. Negative 0.25. A little bit too low. Two to one. Yeah, you could do wireframe, but it just gets noisier than I'd like it to be. Um, good point. Sorry. And this visual, what is it? Visual Styles plugin. Um, is, is a great way to hop into that quickly. And that would let us see. So now our toolpath is gonna start here and go all the way around there. It actually looks decent. Again, just for a, we're, we've only done a couple of clicks here to get our cam going. And we'll go back to 3D and we'll do a contour, which is better for steep walls. Same tool one. Um, and we'll do, I wonder if you could do a derived. Never tried that. Yeah, that's great. So this will save a lot of our settings, including I have to reselect that box. That's a great, uh, glad I thought of that. Now the difference is here, we'll want our bottom height to be stock top of negative 0.22 say, and we'll say model top will be the top height. That'll let those two um, interface better. Hmm, you should not have be having to do a ramp in like that. Let's see what the default step down is. 0.4. So yeah, they change that to say five thou. See what we get. We've got to do a finer step down here because of the nature of the geometry. Um, so let's just do a quick simulation. Now, the graphics are not perfect. Um, the part may look different, uh, or it will look different. It may look better than the graphics. The graphics uh, are, I think, tessellated or 
a triangle rendering of the graphics cards. So they're not always as perfect, but they are a decent representation of, of what you've got. And you can see some scalloping right there. So I would probably want to spend some time looking into that, maybe adjusting the step down and so forth. But nevertheless, you can start to see what we've got. Um, now I see a problem. That chamfer looks too big right here. And so that tells me, okay, wait a minute here. I did not finish machining around the bottom profile of my part. And so what I'll do is that'll be a quarter inch tool. Yep. So right after here, we did an adaptive, but not a cleanup. 2D contour. And this will be a good example of picking this tool path. I've got to walk around here, but then update it to be there. There, click plus. You can see that gives me the blue line that is accurately walking around the part. Not a chamfer. Change it back to the correct tool. And I'm going to run it um, just two thou below my part so that we make sure we go all the way past it. Move that back up to here. Simulate. Jump through everything. And now that chamfer looks correct and that it's just a very light edge break style chamfer. And that's it, folks. That's the majority of um, programming that part to flip it over. Um, actually, did we make sure those holes went all the way through? A um, couple of different ways that we could do that. Um, op one vice with, I would probably use talon grips for this. And then op two, op two against vice stop. That's going to be um, the problem. Is is this picture shows we don't have access to the right height? So I want to have my Z plane set off of this. Actually, let me undo that. So under stock, see how it says. Offset from top with 20 thou. I'm going to change it to offset from bottom with that same amount. And that will, and then flip it. And that will accurately, um, actually, we've already machined that down. So it'll be zero. And then we could take the 20 thou away from here. And that will accurately give us the remaining stock right there. And we don't have any left over. So let me measure that. It is one. Actually, if you just click once, it'll copy it. Oops. Do something right. There we go. And then what I would do is probably use this back left edge uh, to locate off of, because you could probe that in uh, and use a stop for making 25 of these. I don't want to probe in um, each one like that. So pick your box point of right here, click OK. And then all we've got to do is I can just copy the face down to here. Now, one thing I would mention is be careful using a huge, oops, um, using a huge face mill on a relatively small part like this can be a lot of unnecessary tool pressure and potentially rip it out, especially if you don't want to whale, you know, clamp down on this part really hard and push, push um, uh, vice marks into it. So you may actually want to face it with a quarter inch tool. It takes a, a, a sl slightly longer amount of time, but really isn't that big of a deal step over 0.2 inches or, or rough it with a quarter inch tool and then just do a light skim cut with a face mill to clean it up afterward. And then 2D contour, um, one, two, I'll pick the right tool here, tool seven. Check that and then run your Sims, check through it all that. But, um, Let's take a look at how much I charge for this part. 
let's see, come up with a number in your head too, guys, because uh, that's what, what's fun. It's easy to agree or disagree with someone's quote. It's harder to think of one on your own. So we're looking at total machine time of five minutes, which is basically nothing to run. Um, but, you know, five of these parts times three minutes would be, excuse me, 25 of these parts times three minutes is, is 75 minutes. There's zero chance you're going to complete this job in an hour and 15 minutes. It's probably more like two and a half hours or two hours. If I'm being honest about actually setting up the machine, setting up the tooling, um, and and running the part um, start to finish. It's for quantity 25 parts. So if I'm thinking about how much I want to charge. Again, um, it's all up to you and how you run your business and how you work with your customers. And what are you selling? Are you selling really fast turnaround? Uh, are there things that are special about it? If this is a commodity part um, that they're going to shop around, this might be something we don't win because I don't want to charge. Um, you know, I don't want to make for example, let's just make up a number, $7 for this. Um, let's assume that doesn't count for material. So $7 is kind of a pr of profit or non-cash costs times 25, $175. There's zero chance I'm going to set up and run this job to put $175 in your pocket. That just doesn't make sense. You'd either need to charge more or have a larger uh, order size. Um, the material price, now that I'm looking at this, it seems a smidge high. So I may say, um, back it down a little and no saw cutting. Uh, op one is where all your work is happening. These are tools that I probably already have set up in the machine. Maybe I've got to set up one drill, low risk, relatively easy. Um, but I'm still going to want to probably make 10 bucks a part. Ironically, that's what was in there. The second op where we flip it and deck it, that could be a $3 op, nothing less. Um, so are there hard costs that you're going to amortize into this? Again, that comes back to whether it's appropriate based on your relationship with your customer and, and what you're selling. Um, I wouldn't charge anything to program the CAD. There was no CAD work here of engineering or soft jaws or anything. Um, the CAM, would I want you know half an hour to program this part? I probably would back that down a little. It's such a simple part um, that I don't think there's going to be a huge appetite for it. So that should get me, make sure the only things I've got here are the, that facing decking material. So if we look at that third-party shipping and handling, that would be for sending it to and from anodizing or somewhere. Shipping and handling to the customer, I could probably get these shipped for nine bucks. So $482 for quantity 25 of these. Uh, I will be honest, I don't think that's going to fly. Um, maybe, but I suspect that's a smidge high. Um, and I should add to this, if we look at the total amount minus the cash cogs. That's I'm going to profit $337. That's a little more than I think I would need to do it. This is a very, very personal. I recognize that folks. And look, it depends on if you're busy, you may bid it high. And if you're slow, you may get more aggressive. There's a lot of dynamics that go into this. Um, and you can fudge whichever numbers you want, but I may say, you know what? Two bucks and nine bucks, 287. I'd like to make closer to 300 bucks. So maybe 250 per perfect, right? Put it, puts it right there. Um, is this a real quote? Uh, actually, it's not. It is a job shop job. It's The situation's a little bit more detailed, and I, I have permission to share the part, but I'm not going to go into it further than that. Uh, but to be honest and straightforward with you on the fact of this matter that somebody is doing this uh, part, it is not us. Uh, and I, the person who may be watching, they're welcome to use this information if they see fit. They probably already quoted it, though, so uh, it'll be interesting to see. So uh, customer is going to get... a. Uh, RFQ response of, I'm going to say, you know, materials, machining, and shipping total of this. Um, you need to add in, um, you need to add in lead time to that quote and any other questions or considerations. I try not to go back. I try to make sure I get everything up front um, to, to be professional about it, but that's how I would do it. Um, how come people are quoting me 1100 I assume you mean $1,100 for a 12 by 12 by two inch part with decent amount of center uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, a 12 inch by 12 inch by two inch piece of aluminum is, is a pretty good chunk of material. Uh, if I go, that might have to be out of plate and not extrusion. Let's take a look if we can see here. Yeah, they don't even have, so it'd have to be plate. So let's just get a quote. Uh, Spencer, no. I mean, I don't want to say I would be faster, but the truth is, yeah, I sp I slowed this down quite a bit to, I know I look like I'm going fast, but 
I would go a little bit faster. I wouldn't have finished all this detail um, for a part for a job this small. You know, you you got three four hundred bucks at risk. Um, I'm gonna look at this part and I'm gonna guess eh, it's gonna take me a couple hours to make twenty five of these. And if we get the job, I will probably now have somebody here in the shop. Um, who who would quote unquote bill at a lower rate? You know, somebody like an intern or somebody younger generate the cam. I will proof check it. Um, that gives them training and experience, and then they would run it. So I wouldn't. Um, I do not generally add. Um, this is an awkward size part because it's not a one off. It's complex where you can charge. You know, <laughs> the irony is you know charging making one of these parts would probably be one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, just it just would be. Um, and some people may do that cheaper. Um, I probably would would not. Um, so let's look at this plate job. So 6061, if you want to cut... Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, went, I was in the wrong menu. 6061 extrusion, 2-inch here. I think they do have 12-inch. Yeah, so 12-inch custom cut quantity 1 at 12.25. Give yourself some cushion. Um, yeah, so your question, Marshall... Um, that's a $275 um, piece of material and that's more risk. Um, there's going to be potentially some warpage to that. Um, I don't know what the nature of the job is, but if it's quantity one, I mean, I've got to amortize a bunch of programming time. I've got to have the conversation with you. Um, it's, it's difficult. You know, um, I can't speak to me. Yeah, you'd have to, Excuse me, you have to see the part, but you say decent amount of center and areas machined out. So um, you're going to be running that on a machine that's going to bill hundred, uh, you know, hundred bucks an hour probably. Um, and zometry, look, I'll be honest, we like zometry. Um, it's going to be expensive for one-offs, but my opinion is that everything's expensive on one-offs, with the exception of you can find the sort of mom and pops, and, and frankly, we were a mom and pop, and maybe still are. Where they're just they just don't they aren't as judicious at uh, making sure they charge for the one-off costs. And the reason I say that is that those businesses, mine included, we could not scale our job shop work tenfold or hundredfold because the reality is we spend so much time um, on the stuff that doesn't really get reimbursed that you don't have a, a scalable business where you can have um, where you can have people that are actually generating quotes and procurement departments and tooling and so forth. Um, so we, we ordered some stuff on geometry recently, and I think I spent, I don't know, I think actually I spent about 1200 bucks for it. And I probably could have gotten it done for seven or 800 bucks from somebody else. But I, I literally drug my file over, saw the quote hit go. And I was done versus having to establish a relationship or send off a new part or have conversations about everything. Um, I mean, look, it's not the, they're not ever going to be the bottom dollar option, but I still think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, and if we, that product for us is going to make, I don't want to say so much money that makes it sound like we're making foolish decisions, but the reality is um, 300 bucks to get a, 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 you know, that investment up front to get a part on my desk in a week to move forward is, it was a great investment. Garrett, um, tips on getting started. So I've got an article started to draft that we're going to throw on the NYC CNC website with a bunch of different tips on getting started and getting work um, and jobs in. There's some really good uh, ways and advice that we've got for that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Under in under the NYC CNC website, under start your business, um, this isn't as job shop specific right now. Um, we're going to be adding a couple of things that are more more machine shop and job shop specific, though, including sourcing the parts, including getting work. Um, we've got some good information on how we run our shop here. Um, so please make use of that. What else? I think we'll run this for another four minutes and that'll make it just about an even hour. Um, did you guys enjoy this? I think the comments are probably lagged for me uh, 30 seconds or so, which is just, just awkward enough to where I'm going to sit here and not talk for a second till you can hear it. Awesome. I, I enjoy this because um, this is real. I mean, this is how I work. This is me working effectively um, real time. And it's not as, it doesn't have as um, 
much of a polish as some of the video um, videos do. Obviously, where we're able to edit them and produce them and so forth. But um, hey, is that you, Brad, Basement Machinist? Um, but um, the video will be available to watch. So there's no need to have actually attended it live. Although the live benefit is you guys get to talk to me or ask questions. Um, but no, I really, uh, I've said this a number of times. Um, we are going to be releasing Wednesday widget 200. And that for me really caps the four years of straight videos that we've been putting out since I moved to Ohio, which is also when I quit my day job and, um, started, um, started doing this full time. So really been, um, a, a sort of a meaningful event next week for me. And I, I think it's cool. I enjoy what I do. I try to, to share and give it back, but also it's a business for us. We've got to do things that, that help us make money and keep doing what we're doing. Um, one of the things that we're doing is if you go to the NYC CNC website under library, I think there's like 600 articles right now. Um, of those about 15 are limited to our pro members. Um, some of it's stuff like the quoting template, some of the really more advanced entrepreneurship business stuff, some of the CAD and CAM tutorials. But if you like what we do, consider becoming a pro member. Uh, we've got what I like to call a troll-free forum. <laughs> so it's a forum that I pay attention to and, and monitor and I'm active on, but also a nice little community that that stays away from some of the drama of um, some some of the drama of the other forums. Um, and what else was I going to mention? Um, I had something else to say. Um, I can't remember now. So, what else? See you, Spencer. Okay, so yeah, um, it doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily overlap with Patreon. We're we're moving. Patreon is is great, um, and, and it does some things that NYC CNC doesn't do just yet. Um, but it, Patreon stinks. It doesn't let us do all this is content organization and stuff. And um, this is definitely the future and the focus. We we also don't want to penalize folks that have supported us on Patreon. So we're kind of trying to balance them them both right now. Um, if you're deciding between the two, my preference and request would be over here on NYC CNC. Um, and eventually if we get some of the, um, we need a way to um, have uh, like a, either an alert or mailing list, which we're working on. Uh, and, and we finally get all that merged, we'll, we'll probably end up sort of slowly winding down our Patreon. But we've got a pretty big following there. And if anyone has done stuff like this, it's very difficult to get people to move from one to another. And we don't want to just shut it down. It's a, It's got a nice little community and we still use it, so forth. So. Um, yeah, I, sorry, someone's mentioned the sponsoring thing on YouTube. My criticism of YouTube is they bounce all over the place. And, and, you know, it's the same problem with Patreon. Patreon had some big thing last November where they, they instituted a huge change and it upset a lot of people. We lost a bunch of subscribers and, you know, to some extent that's no big deal, but then look, it is, I mean, that costs us probably hundreds of dollars a month and um, it's frustrating and we don't control it. So um, we are excited because the NYC thing is something that we control. Um, so guys, for the um, Amazon, oh, what is that stuff called? NG, is it on here yet? Um, no. We found a new, actually Ben Benz is the one that made us aware of it. Um, it's not up here yet. I will update this momentarily, guys, as soon as I hang up this live chat. We found some different, um, excuse me, super glue that is much better for flood coolant. Um, and that is uh, the way to go with the flood coolant situation. We have it working. We made our Autodesk A. If you guys saw um, YouTube. Um, NYC CNC huge A Haas. Um, we machined this for, I don't know, it was on the machine for probably half an hour with uh, flood coolant. And and we've done a couple other flood coolant things that have worked great. Um, I know it's more sensitive to it, but you should be able to get it to work. Uh, Matt, have we ever heard of Verica? Yes, we have heard of it, uh, but we have not used it. Um, all right. It's one o'clock folks. Thank you. Uh, I, this is awesome. I, it's much easier nowadays to do this from our end with some of the YouTube advances with how they do the hangouts and live streaming, which is fun. And, um, so Steve, we did a notification though. We, we posted on Facebook a number of times. Um, if you are, um, 
if you are on YouTube, I think what you've got to do um, is make sure. Uh, well, we'll try to do them on Fridays. I don't know if we'll change up the time, but if you click subscribe, then you got to make sure you have the. Oh, actually, we took a picture of it. That's what we did. I'll show you this way. Make sure you've got the little uh, light bulb or bell activated. That way you get alerts from us. Uh, now, in fairness, that means you're going to get an email every time we publish a video. And I, I don't blame you if you don't want that. Um, uh, I don't know otherwise, Steve, though, how to um, tell you ahead of time because YouTube is just going to tell you when we go live. Okay, well, thanks again, folks. Um, appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, everyone have a great long Memorial Day weekend. Take care. See you soon.